Hello everyone, and welcome to another video where I'd like to talk about how to customize the way MATLAB initializes by using a startup.m file. Now, the reason why someone might want to do this is most easily illustrated through an example, so let's take a look at how someone might use MATLAB in a typical project. Now, I don't know about you, but the first thing I do when I'm starting a MATLAB project here is I find a location on my computer where I would like to store my files. So in this case, why don't I just come here to my C drive and I'll create a brand new folder here and maybe let's call this project one. And as you can see, this is an empty folder where I'm going to be storing my MATLAB scripts and functions and other things that are related to the project I'm currently working on. So why don't I go ahead and start MATLAB here by double clicking on the icon I've got on my desktop and up pops MATLAB. I'll bring it over here so we can see it a little bit better. And I will start a new script here, and this is going to be my brand new script file. So let's just go ahead and make uh, a couple of notes here of the header just of what we're trying to do. So this is a project to illustrate why a startup.m file is useful. So maybe I'll put my name here. And maybe I'll put a little version history. And I'll start my MATLAB script the way I always start all of them with a clear CLC close all. And at this point, this is a pretty good amount of work here. Why don't I go ahead and save this file and I'm gonna save it in that folder that I just created on my C drive. So in C project one, I'll call this how about main script file, okay? So now that I've saved this, I can go ahead and run this file or this script. It's really simple at this point. And as you can probably imagine, the first thing I'm going to get is this little warning that says, hey, the file that you're trying to run is not actually in your current directory. If you look up here, you'll see that my working directory now is actually C users Christopher desktop temp. And if you remember, I actually saved this file in C project one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the folder to that current location. And now MATLAB has no problem finding the script and it can execute it and it's pretty boring right now. So why don't we make this a little bit more interesting? So I can go ahead and let's say I would like to perform some calculations. Let's do something really simple. How about X is three, Y is uh, 4.67 and I want to do something like Z is X plus Y here. And maybe let's display the results here. So let's go ahead and say, uh, I'll take off the semicolon on this line so it actually does something interesting. And there you go. So we're working, and as you start getting a little bit more complicated, you are probably going to say that, you know what, I would like to shuffle some of these calculations to an other function, a dedicated function. So why don't I shuffle this really simple addition that I'm doing just for the point of illustrative purposes, I'll move this to another function. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new script here and I'm just going to do something really simple like function uh, z is my addition. I'll call this function and I'll give it an x and a y and then the operation is really simple. z is x plus y. Okay and then again I'm going to save this and I need a place to save it. Now in my current sort of naive setup, I'm going to put this in this same folder in the project one folder. And I'm going to, again, call it my addition. And I can go ahead and hit save. And now, if we look in my current folder, I have both the main script file and the addition file as expected. So if I come back to my main script file here, and I can now shuffle this operation here to the my addition function. Right, and I should get the exact same result. So if I run this, I get the same result as expected. Okay, now that we're cooking a little bit, let's go ahead and maybe add another function. Maybe what I would like to do is I'd like to see if I could, uh, you know, this is a little bit boring to just see Z and the result displayed here in this blank text. Let's go ahead and try to frame that with some stars. That might make it a little bit more interesting. So let's write ourselves another little function that will accept a string and frame it all up in stars to make a nice pretty display. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a, a new function here. I'm gonna call this thing frame, whoops, sorry, equals frame with, st with stars. And I'll pass it a string here. So let's just go ahead and figure out how long that is. 
And then I'm going to make a bar that's full of stars. Uh, so I'm going to say for k gets 1, 2, n plus 2, because I'm going to want 1 on the front and the end. I'm going to say bar is bar. And I'm going to just concatenate a single star on the end. And then I'll go ahead and display this bar. And then I'll display a uh, star with the original string and then another star at the end. And then I'll finally display this nice bar of stars on the bottom here. So here's my function that's gonna take a string and just encase it completely and frame it with a bunch of stars or multiplication signs. So again, let's go ahead and save that. And again, we will save this in that project one location. So let's go ahead and do that. And now if I come back to my main script file, I should be able to do things like display the result frame with a bunch of stars. So I can go ahead and frame with stars num to, to string. I'm going to convert that number to a string here like such. And now if I run this code again, this is nice. I get the boring display at the top, but then I have my nice result here where I have that number framed in a bunch of stars. So this looks good and I think it is enough to illustrate what we're looking for here in the sense that if I come back to my file structure, you see that you can imagine if you get much more complicated and you start having hundreds or thousands of all of these functions like the frame with stars and the my addition and then a multitude of other ones, you don't want them all in this flat file structure. In fact, you probably want them somewhere on your machine where they can serve as a centralized software development kit and other scripts can call those or use those functions um, without actually having to have the physical files in the same folder as the project. So why don't we do that right now? Let's go ahead and I am going to go up one level and let's start a new folder called how about my MATLAB software development kit or SDK. Okay. And as you can probably imagine, again, I don't want this to all be one nice flat file structure. I might want to group all my functions in terms of what they do. So maybe I'll have a folder called um, mathematical manipulations. I might have another folder for, say, uh, string operations, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what I can now do here is let's go ahead and come back to my project file here, which was in my C drive project one here. And I'm going to start moving some of these files into my nice SDK where I think would be a little bit better organized. So this frame with stars function, that's the string operation. Let's just move it here to the string operations folder. And this thing where I had it's called my addition, that's a mathematical manipulation. So I'll put this in the math manipulations folder. And there we go. Now at least the file structure on my disk is a little bit more clean here. But the problem is if I come back to my MATLAB script now, if I want to run this, I'm going to get a bunch of errors. Namely, it doesn't know where this my addition function is and it doesn't know where frame with stars is. The reason why here is when you make a call to some kind of MATLAB function, MATLAB does two things. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to look for the definition of this function here in your current working directory. So if I say PWD or print working directory, you'll see that I'm currently in the C project one folder. Since I moved those functions out of this folder, MATLAB can't find it there. So it does the second thing, which is it starts to look on its path. You can figure out the path of all the directories that MATLAB is going to search by simply typing in path in the command window and hitting enter. And as you can see, MATLAB in my instance has a bunch of toolboxes installed and it's going to look into all of these locations to try to find the definition of a function called myaddition.m. And since it can't find it, it throws this error as expected. Okay. So how do we get around this? Well, one modification we can do here is, all right, well, what I'll simply do is add the path to my MATLAB SDK here. So what I could simply do is I could make a line of code here which says add path, and I will add the path to, let's go ahead and find it, both these folders here. So here's the location of the mathematical manipulations so I can come here and I'll add that path. And I also am gonna to have to add the path to the string operators as well, right? So I'll come and get that location as well. String operations, I'll copy this file path. 
And now line 14 and 15 are going to add that to my MATLAB path so that when line 21 gets hit, MATLAB will be able to find the function called my addition. And when it hits line 24, it will be able to find the line called frame with stars. So let's go ahead and run this and everything should be fine. And indeed it is, right? Things are working fine because I can verify that if I type in path, if I scroll to the very top of this, you'll see that the two paths that got added are the ones to my custom MATLAB SDK. So this is actually a semi-viable solution right now. The only drawback with this is if you think about this long enough, this chunk of code that we've got here now has to be repeated in every single one of your MATLAB scripts, right? So if you have many, many directories that you're adding, not only is this cumbersome in the sense that you're going to have this block of add paths at the very top of your script, of every script, in fact, what happens if some of these paths change, right? You don't want to have to go back and try to update every single one of your MATLAB scripts that have all of these add path calls to it. So instead, a more elegant solution here is why don't I take these add path solutions or uh, directives and I'm going to go ahead and start a new MATLAB file and I'm actually going to call this something very special. I'm going to call this thing startup.m or sorry, startup and inside startup here, I'm going to add these path uh, or add all of these add path directives here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file as startup.m and I'm going to put this in a very specific location. Why don't I come here to my C drive and I'll go to maybe, how about my MATLAB SDK? I'll save it at the very top uh, level. It really doesn't matter where you save this as long as you save it as something called startup.m. What this file is, it's you are going to list all of the directives or commands that you would like MATLAB to uh, execute as soon as it initializes. So the way this is going to work now is let's go ahead and close MATLAB. And what I can do is actually I'm going to take this icon, this MATLAB startup icon, I'm going to make a copy of it. So I'm just going to right click on this thing. I'm going to copy and I'm literally going to right click and I'm going to paste that same shortcut. So again, this is a shortcut, but maybe what might be more useful is I'm going to rename this here to maybe my custom startup okay the reason why is what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on this icon that i'm customizing select properties here and in this startup uh dialog i'm going to put the location of where i stored that startup.m file which is right here so if i copy this file path and paste it in the start in hit apply and hit ok now, if I were to launch MATLAB via this customized icon, it is actually going to run this startup.m file when it initializes. And as we saw, that startup.m file has all of those uh, add path commands. So all the paths to my SDK will get initialized when I start MATLAB up. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's go ahead and double click on this icon. MATLAB is now booting up. And once it does, I'll bring it over here and we'll inspect the path here. So again, let me close this. Let's come back to my uh, main script here. We can delete this line of code here. And as you can see, we have this very nice clean set of code here. It makes two calls to two customized functions, which I have now located in a proper file structure on my machine, which is going to be conducive to more complicated operations in the future. And if I go ahead and type the word path here, and scroll to the very top, you'll see that yes, indeed, MATLAB upon initialization has automatically run that startup.m file and added these two paths to my MATLAB path. So this script should now run cleanly with no problems. And there we go. So that concludes this video, and I think it shows a little bit on how you can customize the way that MATLAB initializes by using this startup.m file. So I hope that was helpful, and I'll look forward to seeing you again in a future video. Thank you.